Hello everyone, this is Phil Jones for Projector Reviews. As part of our Spring Projection Summit, we're gonna be giving you a inside look at Infocomp 2022 in Las Vegas. We'd like to thank our sponsors, AV Pro Edge and Meridio for helping us put on this year's Spring Projection Summit, where we talk about everything you need to build a great projection system. And that includes projectors, screens, mounts, video distribution, and even cabling. While at Infocom, a big emphasis is direct LED, and if you look behind me, and as you walk through the show, you see a lot of direct LED panels and flat panel televisions, but there's a lot of things that, that still a projector is a better solution. So we're gonna walk you through the show and show you some of those solutions that we found notable, as well as talk to some of our favorite manufacturers. Several major projector manufacturers attended the show this year. These included Sony, ViewSonic, Optima, and Sharp NEC. All of them were had projector demonstrations going on in their booths. We took a few minutes to interview Scott Wellington at Panasonic Connect about their products and services and why projectors are still a great option for many professional applications. Hey everybody, I'm here with Scott Wellington. Scott, this is the first time I actually get to see you in person and actually touch you. Because <laughs> most of the time we're like, 3,000 miles away. It's good to be here. Yeah, so so the booth looks amazing. So can you talk a little bit about um, what you brought to the show, um, especially from the projector side, because we are projector booths. Sure, absolutely. You know, we have a lot of exciting new products here. The PT RQ25 is a brand new 20,000 lumen 4K projector. What makes it really special is it's the world's smallest and lightest mm -hmm. uh, three chip DLP 4K laser projector mm -hmm. in the market. So this is really very, very exciting. And that's a big point because these projectors used to be gigantic. Trying to mount it has always been a challenge. So making them more compact and making them smaller is, is a big deal. So, how did, so how, did you, how did you do that and why did you do that? Well, we did that because number one, our customers were looking for it. Mm -hmm. They're looking for it for a lot of different reasons. Logistics uh, you know, savings, human resource savings, mm -hmm. manpower savings. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of benefits to making it as small as possible. So instead of two or three people working with a projector, mm -hmm. one or two people could work with a projector. Mm -hmm. Now, how did we do it is another, another story. We've redesigned our cooling system, mm -hmm. we've redesigned our laser drive, mm -hmm. we've redesigned our optics. A lot of different things have been redesigned mm -hmm. so that we could make it smaller and lighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I'm a rental, say I'm a rental guy, yeah. and, um, and I had the older series, and I have all of these lenses. Are they compatible with the new model? Yes, absolutely, uh, no question about it. Our three chip lenses are compatible with current products, will be compatible with the RQ25 that'll be available in November. Now that's like kind of the flagship model in the, in the building, but as you can see behind me from the chart here, you guys have a huge selection of of options and applications? Well, as far as uh, products, I mean, we have LCD solutions, one chip DLP, three chip DLP. We have a very wide range of, of projectors, obviously. And what makes it really special to be with Panasonic projectors when we're dealing with customers, mm -hmm. we have, in many cases, more than one or two solutions to the customer. Mm -hmm. Okay, we could have up to three or four different solutions depending on budget, application, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Exactly. So we have a very, very wide range of options, solutions, and 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 uh, new products that are coming down the pike. Yes, and, and I'm looking forward to reviewing even more Panasonics in the future. Oh, and one more thing. I came to the booth and now it says Panasonic Connect. Can you explain what that is now? Well, Panasonic Connect is the name of our new company. Mm -hmm. What it's really all about in really very simplistic terms, we're more than just selling hardware. Mm -hmm. We're more than just a box selling company. Mm -hmm. We're selling solutions, we're selling a wide range of different product categories mm -hmm. to support ecosystem mm -hmm. applications. Yeah, so, so make, make yourself a one-stop shop. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's, uh, there's probably very few, if any, uh, competitors that can do that. Exactly, and as you walk around the booth, you'll see that there's there's all these different other applications. So it shows you know, how you use these projectors in a variety of different applications, and that you can do more than just the projector. Like for example, the Prescent, which we've reviewed in the past. Check it out on Projector Reviews, and, um, and some other th options that you're coming down the pipeline. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so Scott, thank you very much 
for, for, for taking a few minutes to talk to us about Panasonic Connect. Thank you very much. See you later. And I'll see you next show. Absolutely. Projector manufacturers are working hard to deliver brighter and more vivid images from more compact and easy to integrate chassis. The team at Digital Projection was highlighting a unique approach in their booth. What's up everyone? I am at Digital Projection with Scott Smith. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good. Now, every Good. time I come to these big trade shows, whether it's Infocom or, or Cedia, Digital Projection has always has just some of the most state-of-the-art projection. It's the stuff that people strive to own. And, and one thing you guys do a lot is RGB laser. Yes. Yeah. But what's normally the challenges of an RGB laser projector? Um, well, one of the one of the major challenges with with RGB laser is obviously uh, the size chassis mm -hmm. that you have to put it into. Okay. And obviously, with that comes its own challenges of heat, mm -hmm. noise, things of that nature. So, which comes to our one of the new things that we're showing here at the show today. Yes. So, what are we talking about here? This is called the satellite. Yeah. So this is called the satellite MLS. Mm -hmm. We've got three different models of satellite. There's the highlight. There's the Titan. And then there's the inside. Okay. So to make it a little bit clear what's different about the satellite versus a traditional integrated projector, mm -hmm. um, let alone a um, RGB laser projector, is now what we've taken is we've got a head that just sits in the room. So all that sits in that room now is, is just the lensing facility along with your inputs, but the lasers themselves are held in a laser bank mm -hmm. that is actually um, back at your rack. Okay, how okay. far away could it be? Well, so as far as how far that limitation is, we don't really have a number. I can tell you that we make the fiber in a 10, 20, and 30 meter increment. Okay. Now we can go custom. I just did one for 100 meters. Okay. okay? But the longer you go, you start to lose brightness. Yeah. The packaging for this is just mm -hmm. so much easier to yes. integrate into a theater because now you don't have this gigantic box that has to go in a quiet box above you, behind you in another space. This can easily fit in the back of a theater and, and really project a gigantic um, screen, whether it's in a home theater or a conference room yep. or any other space like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So that's one of the, that's, again, that's one of the many advantages of satellites. So one is, again, we got that form factor. Number one, in, in a dedicated cinema, home cinema, you know, obviously uh, we want it quiet as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all the fans and noise are back there at the light source that's mm -hmm. tucked away in the, in the rack mm -hmm. and also the size. You know, usually, so these projectors, like I said, we can go anywhere from 10,000 lumens all the way to 40,000 lumens. Mm -hmm. uh, you typically Typically a projector that's 20,000 lumens, which is what this unit here can do. Would be? Size of a Volkswagen. Yeah, exactly. Right? And loud, noisy, mm -hmm. and would also need uh, 220 volt power, mm -hmm. okay? Whereas here, I can take two 110 outlets, do 20,000 lumens all through a little box that's this size. A lot of people showing, oh, look at my 20,000 lumen projection, how compact it is. That's not an RGB laser. A lot Correct. of them are blue laser phosphor. So the fact that you can do this and offer this level of performance is such a compact package. The other thing that's kind of neat is, is how scalable it is. So if I want 10,000 and then I want 20,000 and I want 30,000, can you explain how that works as well? Absolutely. So again, so the highlight itself, um, this unit, this, are in, this is the entry level into the side of the MLS system. Mm -hmm. So this one can do up to 20,000 lumens. Mm -hmm. Well, like I mentioned, you've got a light bank, right? Mm -hmm. Your light source, they come in 10,000 lumen increments. Mm -hmm. So if I've got 10,000, but let's say later on, you know, I, um, I decide, hey, I want a bigger screen or I've moved this thing or, you know, I want more lumens. Mm -hmm. I can just buy another one, put it in there. Mm -hmm. Now I've got 20,000 lumens. So that's cool. So once you buy this unit, if like you said, if you want to expand or you want more capability, yeah. it's just upgrading, just adding the additional. Correct. Now, there is one caveat to that. Mm -hmm. And that is obviously so if we've got um, one light bank or mm -hmm. one 10,000 lumen mm -hmm. light source, mm -hmm. then we've got a one-to-one -one cable coming in here from mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. If I've got two, it's like a Y, so it's like two-to-one. Okay. So if I ever think I'm going to go up or I want that flexibility, I would want a cable that allows me Just to in case. Just in case. Pre-wire. Correct. You guys are integrators. Correct. You know pre-wire for any possible scenario because you never know, yeah. right? Right. That's right. Now, now I love this piece. I'm trying to get a review piece for, for this because I think it's just a great, great application. We can work that out. You know. Now, of course, you have some other models here. You're also even showing a smaller, more compact um, 4K DLP piece, right? Yeah, we've got a new, so DP has always been known as the big, brighter, um, very, a lot of, lot of really high-end projectors mm -hmm. um, and an innovator. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we um, obviously, DLP technology, we helped pioneer that with Texas Instruments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had one of the first 4K DLP projectors. Now we've got the world's first 8K DLP projector. Mm -hmm. um, satellite, 
Um, so, you know, we've been known as that, but as far as, you know, to get into DP at an entry level price point in 4K in the home theater market, um, you know, we just, we, we haven't been there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some great products, but at the very entry level, mm -hmm. um, we haven't been there. But now the new E-Vision 4000 4K, that unit there is a retail of about $8,000. So very approachable. Very approachable, um, 3,800 lumens, 4K, uh, Great looking projector, color out of it, out of the box looks mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Well, so you guys a have a higher person. expectation. So yes. if you're making something like this, yes. with something like one of the big boys back there, that's right. Going into more of a, a, a fixed lens system or something like that, you just yeah. have a more, you have a different level of what you expect when it comes to picture Yes, quality. absolutely. Okay. So, so Scott, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I look forward to, to playing with the unit well, well, as we look, soon as possible. Yes, and we look forward to having you review this. Okay. Take care. Absolutely. Thank you. Whether you're designing a home theater, a boardroom or a lecture hall. A screen is an important part of any projection system. There were several screen manufacturers displaying products at this year's Infocom, but one screen at daylight really stood out. Hi everyone, I am here at the Legrand booth and we are talking to Daylight and Sarah. Yes. So Sarah, there's more to a projection system than just a projector. You, it's, you gotta take into account things like the screen as well as how you're gonna connect it. And you guys are showing a really, really cool screen solution here. Can you talk a little bit about it? Certainly. So what we're showcasing here is our new Sightline cable drop feature. Mm -hmm. So what it's doing is it's providing cables to lower the screen to the viewing height for mm -hmm. the audience uh, versus unsightly black drop. Mm -hmm. So uh, really providing a beautiful aesthetic and it's paired with our tension advantage and advantage product line. Mm -hmm. It's a ceiling recessed screen, mm -hmm. um, as well as our 16K um, and ambient light rejection screen surfaces mm -hmm. and the tension screen. Um, and what the sight line does is that maybe the project specs have changed mm -hmm. um, and you need, and, and you forgot to go back in and, mm -hmm. and edit that. Mm -hmm. um, this provides you a lot of forgiveness on site, up to 70 inches a drop. Okay. Um, say you want to put a uh, usable space now above that screen. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, you can put um, speakers, speakers and cameras, cameras, lighting. Exactly, above the screen. Or say you reconfigure the room. This allows you that variability to change the height of the screen on site yeah. without compromising tension. Yeah. So 70 inches of adjustability Correct. on where you want the place to be, which Correct. really helps with retrofitting yes. is, is what yes. it really helps with. And like I said, it, it really does make it seem like the screen is just floating because yes. you don't have that big black sheet of material um, <laughs> above the screen so it really does make it look very very good that's and right. very elegant whether it's a conference room or in a um, home theater space yep. now question for you what size does this is this screen available yes yeah, so what you're looking at here behind us is 177 inch diagonal mm -hmm. that's the largest in 16.9 format mm -hmm. and then it goes to 183 in uh, 16.10 mm -hmm in the tension screen. Yes, so we're gonna be reviewing um, this screen system um, this year. I'm gonna get a much smaller one because I'm not sure how I'm gonna <laughs> get 170 something inches in, into, into our lab. But we're gonna actually talk about the system. I really think it is a very um, cool system with a lot of flexibility and it just looks great. Yep, now, game changer. Now, um, as you said, uh, this is just one solution you have, right? You yes. have all the other types of options, yes. right? Because Daylight's a very big screen That's right. um, system manufacturer. That's right, we have electric screens, we have tensioned, non-tensioned screens, we have um, fixed frames, portable screens, uh, we have interactive screens as well. Uh, so the whole gamut, uh, and paired with the highest resolution screens that we produce, 16K resolution, mm -hmm. uh, and a full line of ambient light rejection screen surfaces yeah. as well. Basically, if someone's looking for a screen, they can tell you what their application is, and based on the application, that determines what type of frame it's in, whether it goes up and down, or whether right. it's on the wall, and what type of material they're gonna be utilizing. That's right. So for example, ambient light rejecting would be great in environments like this, um, because as we still know, there's a lot of direct LED at the show this year, but when it comes to um, image per inch, yeah. the projector is still the best way to go. It and is. if you have a bright projector like the Christie you have here, you can have a very good experience even in a room with ambient light. Yep, a beautiful, beautiful two piece projection. Okay, so Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you. While well, HDMI is still the number one way to connect a source device to a projector in a meeting room or classroom, some laptops and tablets don't include that connection. We are starting to see long distance solutions that include both HDMI and USB-C connections from companies such as C2G. 
We are at the Legrand booth and we're talking about the things you need to build a great projection system. And one thing you need is a way to get the signal from point A to point B. So we're here talking to C2G about some of your long distance HDMI um, distribution solutions. So, so Robert, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. So, so, so Robert, can you talk a little bit about C2G? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm, I'm Robert Mays, I'm with uh, C2G Product Marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, C2G's been around since 1984, mm -hmm. uh, supplying a lot of great cables, a lot of great products, uh, really getting into that connectivity solution. Mm -hmm. And one of our biggest uh, focuses is our extension mm -hmm. right now. And uh, specifically, uh, this particular unit right here is one that we're showcasing at, at today's uh, Infocom show. It's our HD base T plus USB-C solution. So one of the nice things about this is it's actually going to allow you to transmit audio video over HDMI or USB-C. Uh, if you have them both plugged in, it does have a manual input switch. Uh, also can switch automatically or even a control switch. Uh, we also do data over this. So the data goes to your receiver. Uh, you got four USB-A ports, and the nice thing about these uh, USB-A ports, the top two will support camera streaming. Okay. So USB cameras with this. Um, HD Base T is just a cool technology in general because mm -hmm. it supports what's called Five Play, mm -hmm. which allows audio, video, mm -hmm. data, power, mm -hmm. Ethernet, and control all over a networking Cat6 cable or mm -hmm. Cat6A cable. Mm -hmm. And for 4K video, you'll get about 115 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, 1080p, you can uh, get 230 feet if you're okay with that. And then the USB is supported up to 230 feet. Okay. So the nice thing about this, by the way, if you look at most laptops these days, people bring in the conference rooms and stuff, they don't even have HDMI no, on. No, no, sometimes US, just a single USB-C. USB -C. Yep. So having this adapter just means there's one less dongle right. that you have to right. have in the room to connect the laptop to the projector yeah. or to the display device. And so that's always safer fun. to have more of a direct connection. Is that, like you said, one less adapter? Mm -hmm. um, while adapters are great and we test all of ours, uh, but you are adding a failure possibility, a failure point into anything when you add extra adapters. Yes. Having a direct connect to this with USB-C is phenomenal, mm -hmm. uh, but I can tell you, we do test all of our cables with our adapters mm -hmm. and we don't fail. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that point yeah. out. So yeah, so like I said, you guys have a large range of, of HT base D um, or USB be based extensions, but sometimes you just need a good old fashioned physical cable to a certain length. And that leads us to, to your selection oh, of cables here, absolutely. right? Yes. So, so let's talk a little bit about this guy right here. This is your active cable, yeah, right? Yeah, so this is making a debut at today's show. Uh, this is our C2G Performance Series HDMI active optical cable. Uh, I tell you, it has been uh, engineered and tested to be perfection. Uh, this cable uh, actually comes in lengths between 15 feet all the way up to 300 feet. Uh, the nice thing about it, uh, some of our engineering differences that we've done Done with this, so it's going to have uh, integrated finger grips that are on uh, the top and bottom as well as the sides. Uh, we have a compact overmolding, so it's going to fit in conduit really well for those installations. The connector shell has a two-time gripping force, so it's not going to pull, pull out, out of that device real easy. And then, should you go with those longer lengths and you need that power boost, this has a USB-C connection that will actually allow you to go C to A, so you can plug into that projector to get that extra boost to power. If the projector doesn't have a USB-A, you can plug it into a wall outlet yeah. even with just a cell phone charger. Yeah. So let's talk about this. I actually, there's a lot of optical cables out there, mm -hmm. or active cables out there, and, and theoretically there's five volts of, of, of power being supplied by the display. But a lot of times those displays, that power kind of drifts off and the picture yes. goes away. Yes. So it isn't a hundred percent reliable, as, and you don't want people calling the IT department every five minutes right. because the picture dropped away. Having the having an external like this actually um, makes it more consistent with its performance. Absolutely. So, I, so even though I've seen these without it, I actually prefer it with um, the external like this, so that makes me happy. Yeah, All right. when you go beyond that 50 foot length, this really helps to make sure you're securing that 4K signal. Okay. Yeah. All right, excellent. So we could talk about all of the other things they, that they offer, but we just don't have time. But we have they have adapters um, to convert from USB-C to A, from DisplayPort to HDMI, and the list goes on and on. And those are really nice as well. We're going to be actually reviewing the cable as well as the um, the um, HD base, base T extension um, in the future. So stand by on ProjectorReviews.com. So Robert, thank you very much for yes, your time. Thank you. And I'll see you next show. Awesome. Appreciate it, thank you. The AV Pro family of brands offer products that include Meridial test equipment and AV Pro Edge video distribution solutions, which are designed to ensure reliable, high quality, 
audio and video in any consumer or business application. I spent a few minutes with one of their lead engineers, Cody Hine, discussing the offerings they were displaying at this year's show. We are at Infocom 2022, and I'm in my one of my favorite booths, the AV Pro Edge Meridio booth, and joining me is Cody Hine. Cody, how are you? Look good, excellent, how are you? Good. A big thing for projector people is AK, so we want to make sure that we're prepared for the future, and one way to do that is to test your cables and your infrastructure when it's, when it's put in. So, so what solutions do you guys have for that? Yeah, we have a few different options. Um, so from the most simple, easy to use um, cable testers, we have the Fox and the Hound, which are great for troubleshooting okay. uh, installations. Uh, our new versions just came out, so these support up to 8K. Okay. Uh, so these will do your basic cable testing. Okay, if you so want to get more in depth, we do have uh, our 8K version of the 6A and 6G, which are more advanced, they can do some more uh, things like if you're looking to do calibration of okay. displays and things so, like that. So I actually have um, six, these uh, six A's and six G's, but what I noticed is they're a little bit more sturdy and solid now, right? Yeah, we just uh, came out with some, some new uh, shells for the analyzer and generator, so those will now be a metal shell. They're a lot more durable and they're gonna feel real sturdy for you. So this would be something like if I wanna test my, my video distribution, if I wanna verify before I put in the wall that that cable is going to work or that this is the solution I would use. Yes. Moving up to this one, what does this add that that does not have? So this has the ability to connect for different calibration systems. So mm -hmm. if you're using CalMan or other calibration software, you can connect with these and generate a signal out. You can do some more advanced um, analysis of the signal that we can't get with the Fox and the Hound. Okay. So speaking of, of, of analysis, you're an engineer, yes. right? And, and you're involved in product development. Yes. So, Sometimes when you develop products, you need a little even more information, Correct. and that's where this comes in, right? Yeah, so the AK7 um, generator is new, so we did have the, the previous uh, version of the 7 generator, but this is great. It has a lot more capability for live graphic tests, for uh, you can load on content yourself here, but it gives you more in-depth information about eARC data or Dolby Vision, stuff that we just can't do with the uh, 6A, 6G. So manufacturers love getting the 7 generator or really high-end. Um, you know, people who are analyzing the signal to make sure that it is the premium uh, signal. They can do everything with that generator. Okay, okay. So, so these are a way of testing to make sure that you're prepared for the future when we talk about when we talk about 8K or 4K 120. These are great ways to ensure that your system yeah. is ready. Now, a lot of times there's AV systems, like audio systems, and the, and the thing that normally changes in audio systems are are the the video side of it most of the time, because Dolby Atmos has been around for a while, DTSX has been around for a while, IMAX Enhanced has been around for a while, but all of a sudden, every five minutes is a new video, a, a level of video. So what do you have if I want to keep my old audio system, but I want to upgrade the video distribution? Yeah, so case? this year we launched the um, MX42X, so this is uh, similar to our old MX42. Mm -hmm. So this has four HDMI inputs and two outputs. Mm -hmm. One of the outputs, you can actually downscale the video capability of it, so uh -huh. an older AVR that doesn't support HDMI 2.1, uh -huh. no 4K 120, mm -hmm. or 8K, you can downscale that output so you have lower bandwidth, so the AVR can handle that signal and extract out the audio and play the audio without an issue. So you okay. don't have to upgrade your AVR if you want to upgrade to an 8K projector or any other type of display okay. that can support the new features. Okay. And it also has regular audio extraction as well, right? Correct, it does two channel, yeah. uh, optical and analog line level out. Okay, so yeah, so it's pretty compact, you know. Now, do you, now, you guys also have a lot of other solutions when it comes to video distribution, right? Yeah, we have a lot of different options for matrix switchers if you're looking for multi-in, multi-out. Um, and last year, we did our first AV over IP line. That was a one, one gig solution. And this year, we have a higher quality, a better bandwidth solution that's full 10 gig. And we do everything from the input and output devices through the 10 gig switch. Okay, okay, and that's one of the things that you're showing back here. Correct. And that's the MXNet. That's Correct. So we have MXNet uh, is our AV over IP platform, and we have the two varieties. Our new one, actually, the 10 gig system uh, supports tiling, so you can do video walls or multiple, um, you know, if you want to watch multiple sports games uh -huh. uh, in that theater room mm -hmm. or in that viewing area, you can put them all on one screen and, and see it out all over IP. Okay, okay. Now, qu question for you. And I get asked this a lot. People say, well, there is the HD base T solutions, and then there's the video over IP solutions. 
how would I choose and what makes you choose between the two? Well, it really depends. So if you're looking for really high quality, um, if you're looking for uncompressed, like HGBC is probably going to be your best bet, but you're limited with your distribution methods. It's a lot more challenging to distribute that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have solutions where you can do that throughout the whole system, but it's mm -hmm. a lot of times more costly. Mm -hmm. um, AV over IP is a little more affordable for a larger system. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're really looking to scale throughout a business or throughout a home that, that has a lot of really mm -hmm. long distance that HGBC might not be able to reach, mm -hmm. AV over IP is a, a lot yeah. better for that. So even if there's a little bit of a drop in picture quality between HD base T and IP, if you're looking at the menu screen or, or what next or what's the next band that's gonna play um, in a in an event in a in a hotel lobby, you're not gonna be nitpicking. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna see that level of detail. Yeah. Like the, the video files and audio files, you want that supreme quality through, that's mm -hmm. where you're looking for HD base T. Mm -hmm. And A V over IP has gotten very good. Mm -hmm. The the quality coming out is uh, only noticeable if you really know what you're looking for. Yeah. So for the average consumer, AV over IP is going to be a much more affordable, scalable yeah. option. So that's great for like hotel lobbies, maybe a sports bar that has 25 TVs oh, throughout yeah, it. Absolutely. That, that type of thing is where it would go. Yeah. Okay, excellent. All right, so guys, I hope, I hope you have learned a little bit. There's some really exciting, cool pieces at the AV Pro Edge booth. And we're going to be reviewing some more of the AV Pro Edge products as well as some new Meridio products along the way. So take care and we'll talk to you soon. So as you can see, while Direct LED is pretty popular at this show, there's still some reasons why you'd want to utilize a projector to give your audience an immersive, engaging experience. So take care and I'll talk to you soon.